As mentioned, I did look at the openings uh, a little bit. I'm hoping I'm not missing any messages anywhere. I don't think I am. Would be kind of embarrassing if I've screwed up the starting time. Let me just briefly check what's going on here, because my opponent not replying instantly could mean any number of things. His clock is not ticking, so that's not a problem, but... Uh, Um, not sure why uh, he appears not to be there. <sighs> Repertoire-wise, now that we, we don't have live moves yet, uh, Repertoire-wise, as far as I could uh, figure out, there's the Dutch, which I will not enjoy all that much, I suspect, but I have some idea what to do against the Dutch. Uh, and against e4, there's all kinds of things. There's the Sveshnikovs and other Sicilians and things. So hmm. I might be kind of alternating between weird things like my Knight of 3g3, you know, licorice all sorts, and, uh, and the things I play normally, which are mainly 1e4. A bit alarmed by the fact that the game is not starting, I'll be honest with you guys, because... I rechecked and it it did say, I mean, the message I got from the organizers did say that it's 5 p.m. And uh, I think it is 5 p.m. Central European right now. I'm okay waiting. I'm just worried that I've missed a, a message somewhere uh, which moved something to a different time slot or something along those lines, but not that I can see. Yeah, I think I think we're okay. I just got a confirmation message from from the orgs, so I can switch back to having the the silver name Boar on the second screen without sound to glance nervously at, because uh, silver name already gave war one game one and I don't know if I should feel particularly unpatri un unpatriotic, but um. I'm Tim Bohr. I think I played reasonably fine in the semis. Uh, I've uh, I've not looked at the game seriously, but I I did do um, a bit of a yeah. Let's maybe do this. It's a kind of a stupid line, but uh, uh, it it makes. I, I assume he is normally not playing the linear, the uh, 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 this Dutch. This Dutch is obviously still playable, but uh, I think most people have uh, have been playing the the Leningrad instead these days. So yeah, maybe I should have. Prepared a little bit more seriously, honestly. Looking at what's going on on the board right now, I have a feeling that maybe doing some more, some more of that fable due diligence may have not not been the stupidest idea in the world. But it's not what I normally do. I wonder if knight d4 is playable here, but you know the speed with which my opponent has played all these moves um, leads me to suggest uh, to to suspect that knight takes uh, c4 is quite playable there in the position. The resulting position could be. I mean, instead of just talking about it, let's just make the move and uh, go from there. Like, the resulting position could actually be uh, uh, worse for white, but I'm kind of hoping it isn't. It's a gamble. Like, this is, this is strategically quite... Well, not strategically risky. It's not like... Uh, we, we're not actually running that many risks strategically here, but we are running tactical risks, certainly, uh, because the pawn on e6 might not survive. Um, queen b3 I'm playing because uh, queen d3, I think they go d5, and queen takes f5, knight e4, my pawn on f2 might start hanging. And I'm trying, uh, basically, to make my opponent play either knight a5 or knight b6, which move, both of which kind of 
uh, you know, make my play in the center a lot easier to realize later in the game. Still a very sharp and clear position I don't know anything about, but yeah, d5 I was worried about, but I thought, you know, at the very least we can take on, I think queen takes b7 shouldn't lose to anything, so I'm, I'm going to try playing that. Uh, yeah, queen d6 is, is very normal, but we do get to... We do get to stabilize, I feel, by just castling and although rook b8, rook uh, b2 there might be annoying. But uh, I'm not going to be better here, but it's a it's a playable position. Uh, I think uh, black is probably very comfortable, but it's fine. Knight e4. Maybe I should have started with b3 actually to make knight e4 slightly. Uh, easier to parry. It's a pleasant position for black, uh, no doubt about that. Bishop f6, I want to play rook b1 and then finally start pushing the, the pieces away. b3 obviously is something that I'm very, very interested in playing, just to get these knights away from their very good squares. Ideally, I probably even want to trade the bishop on c1 for one of them and play e3 to make sure that I don't get mated on the king side. Uh, still running a significant amount of risks here. The more I look at this, the more I, the more I think that I should be very much on my toes here. But at least my opponent started thinking, you know, uh, when you, when you run into something like this, uh, it's, it's a very comforting moment when your, your opponent actually starts burning time uh, because until then you you feel like uh, you're playing against the prep and uh, I didn't really like my position anyway so the combination of not really thinking you're doing too well and also having less time is not a pleasant one rook b4 b3 rook takes a4 is not stupid at all here. My opponent is sort of asking me to play e3, which, as I mentioned, is a move I was quite interested in playing anyway. So, I mean, what he does here, it, it, it definitely makes sense, but I'm not entirely unhappy about it because I think I, I, I now have bailout options available to me with knight takes b6 at, the, at an opportune moment. Bishop b2, knight g4. But I think I'm okay there. I think I can afford to allow it. And then we take on b6 and we play h3. I don't think I get mated in those lines. Uh, rook c8. This is a bit risky. Like, rook c1 is really pushing it, I feel like. I'm really taunting him to take on f2 in some fashion. Uh, that that may have been a little bit a little bit too much. I think it's... Yeah, he's playing, he's playing this game uh, quite well. I quite like what, what Maxim is doing here. Kind of bringing my pieces closer to where I expect the... Uh, the game to be rook fd1 is a bit suspicious though takes takes knight g4 i may have severely underestimated might be in trouble now there rook fd1 was a unbelievably tone deaf move i might have to take with the f pawn honestly which is you know i mean clearly not something that uh you want to be doing in in structures like this queen h6 is now a threat yeah, this is kind of going downhill fast. Stabilizing this position will will be extremely difficult. Uh, not sure if possible, honestly. Like I'm, I'm trying to generate some counterplay. I don't know where this counterplay is supposed to come from, honestly. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, let's go queen of four. Maybe h3. I mean, knight e5 is unpleasant, but I think I'm taking this endgame if it if it presents itself. Knight h5 is a threat now. 
and it's very difficult for me to, you know, find a playable endgame somewhere here. Knight H5 is a very annoying threat here, actually. G6, queen, uh, G5, queen, H6. Uh, I'm, I'm sort of trying to, uh, to generate some uncertainty more than anything else for my opponent. The position is quite bad. So far, I've gotten, I think, soundly outplayed in this game. Rook E7, is G5 now a threat? Uh, not 100% certain. I'm allowing knight d2 sort of on purpose here. Uh, if it didn't happen, it didn't happen. I'm now kind of hinting I might start threat. Well, threatening is a strong word, but kind of intending to take one of the knights. Maybe even this one. <sighs> yeah, this is not great, but I'm just trying to trying to simplify into something uh, semi playable. This is not great. Very worried about some kind of d4 e3 play. Um, correctly spotted by my opponent. This we should be able to save, though. I feel. This is not nearly as bad as it could look. Yeah, I think I should get away with it now. Yeah, that was a very, very scrappy first game. Uh, let me adjust the scores quickly. Uh, felt uh, felt rusty and also, I mean, quite clearly uh, did not get a particularly nice position out of the opening. So happy to get away with with half a point there. Um, I'm going to play the the quieter part of my repertoire for this one for now bishop c4 yeah i don't know about that i'm not sure if i'm supposed to include a5 there I'm also not entirely sure what I'm supposed to do in this position. I'm kind of, I'm wondering why I went for this so happily. Um, kind of stopping knight g5 and f4 here. Knight takes d4 and d5 exists, but I don't know if I should be, uh, you know, entirely unhappy about that. And I'm definitely not castling kingside before I absolutely have to. Knight g3, g6, g5 is bugging me a little bit here. I feel like I probably should be preparing for it somehow. Am I supposed to play bishop e6? I don't know. Yeah, the point is like knight c6, knight g3, g6, g5, h5, knight g5. I don't actually have a comfortable way of protecting the f7 pawn, uh, which is going to be an issue. This looks strange, but there is a point to it, I promise you. It might be a stupid point, but there's definitely a point to it. And that point is I've created the, the a7 square for the rook. Yeah, it probably is stupid though. Uh, looking at this position, I I am taking a little bit too many liberties with it, because the bishop on a two remains an absolute monster, and I don't know how I'm supposed to be dealing with it long term. Maybe rook c seven c four, but that is just so so slow. Yeah, this is the move. This is a move I did not expect, and I don't think it's great, honestly. Like. Takes, takes. I assume he wants to play c5, but maybe it's not that bad, honestly. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm overly critical. 
Uh, what shall we do? Like, I would like to play B4, but maybe I should just play Bishop B6. What am I talking about? Maybe I should have, what am I, I'm just supposed to do this. But then G5 is annoying. Otherwise, Bishop B6 would be a very solid choice here. But maybe we can find a way to deal with G5. Whoops, King A5 would be a bit illegal. But generally speaking, yeah, I'm, I assume he he feels that this is a huge big achievement to get this knight to c4, but it's not. I mean, the bishop on a2 was, I think, a lot more important uh, to White's general well-being than having the knight on c4, which I can trade with knight b6 at most cases. It's going to be like touch and go because I I might get. Uh, I might get blown away by by a four play uh, later in the game, but I felt sort of I felt worse about my position before that happened. Let's put it like this. I I felt even less confident about the respective qualities of my position prior to all these trades. I'm a little bit behind compared to where I want to be because. Um, like I, I can't really play ninety five. I can't really play ninety six because the knight on f six is constantly hanging. But uh, on a purely positional level, I think this is playable. Uh, in particular, uh, in particular, if I if I don't get mated, and obviously this is the time I get a sort of an important Skype message, which. I have to reply to, which is a bit annoying. Queen f3, we could even maybe argue for knight h7 actually, although knight d6 might be a problem. I'm guessing queen f3 is what he's trying to calculate. My choice is between rook a6 and the immediate knight h7. Generally speaking, something like rook a6, e6 here is very useful to me. So I'll I'll start by making that move. It also stops knight d6 from happening, which is uh, something I'm quite interested in not allowing. Yeah, maybe I've overestimated how good this position is because it's just not good. Trying to bring the knight over, like queen e6, and then to... Specifically, I I want to overprotect the pawn on f7. I was well, I was very worried about allowing some kind of e5 and losing the pawn on f7. And I think I'm semi ready to play knight e5 next move now. Uh, but still, a very very dodgy position, honestly. Some kind of a dream scenario here is me getting to play knight e8, knight d6 uh, to trade the other one. To trade, not the not the knight on. Hang on, I can't. I can't actually. I can do that. Sorry, yeah. <sighs> because I can take with the rook. I uh, momentarily got completely blinded by by the idea of queen takes d6, rook takes f7. But yeah, I do. I do get to make all of my moves here. I should have played rook b8. This is a very... St I, I was planning to play rook b8, and then at the last moment I for some reason played rook b6. I need to have a hgfg. This is so very, very wrong. Oh. Then again, I do have this cheapo. So maybe this will end up working out for me. Like, this, this ends up maybe being a beautiful trap, but it wasn't a beautiful trap. It was me actually changing my mind midway and playing the wrong rook to the b-file. <sighs> but uh, yeah, that is still made in one. That is still made in one. Yeah, I think very appropriately this is going to be a very, very uh, scrappy final. 
Yeah, the, the reason I went with uh, 1d4 is I wanted to to play this. This is a line I've looked at uh, when I was a kid. I I wasn't really like I was a one d four player, and but not a serious one. But I I, I definitely did play one d four growing up, and against the Dutch, I obviously was not interested in you know studying uh, what amounts uh, to you know quote unquote official theory. Uh, so for me, like having a a, a small reasonably easy to learn line to to play uh, against the dutch was quite a valuable thing yeah this is like having played against bishop 6 i think you are kind of supposed to push for like h4 h5 lines but i am trying like a more contained approach here it's not stupid like uh, the bishop often will drop back to f4 uh, and uh, you, you could go for some bishop d3, knight e2, c4 plans, and so on. Not really all that worried about all this expansion on uh, on the king side here. You could even make an argument for h4, g4, knight, knight e5 here, I feel. Does h4 actually create a threat to the g pawn? I think it probably does, right? At least it makes him think, which is, you know, half of the half of the point here. Uh, G four ninety five. We now have uh, knight c three to f four ideas for future uh, for future use. If black just castles here, we have I think a very strong idea of knight g six followed by knight f four, and we win some material. <sighs> There's going to be compensation. I will. I will still have to be quite quite careful about this. Maybe knight e two was in practical terms slightly stronger, but like he's supposed to play rook e eight here. I think I go knight f four. He goes bishop f seven. I take on e five. He goes e seven e five. Um, I yeah, this is not right. I think. I think you know of the of the ways to sacrifice material. I would definitely go with the one I described just now over this. I could even go knight e7, actually, and then knight takes f5. I think it's quite strong. If he goes king h8, we can actually pick up the exchange. And if uh, the king goes to any other square, knight takes f5 appears to be very strong. So, uh, like, we just do this now. Queen takes b2, I can go just knight e2. Or knight g7, knight e2, actually. Seems seems good. And then I will just castle kingside eventually. And uh and play a position where I'm a healthy pawn up for frankly not very much. Yeah, let's just castle kingside. Not not overthink things. Bishop before knight g three or knight of four bishop g three or like any combination of those moves, also f3 at some point. Hmm. I don't know if I need bishop g3, it's a bit of a lazy kind of a... But okay, I mean, it's it's not going to hurt me, so why not make that move? I understand why he is, uh, you know, hoping to generate something on the queen side, but I think uh, it's a lot likelier that, uh, you know, the files he will end up opening will open for me and uh, not for him. Not sure if I'm threatening anything. I'm just playing kind of uh, quiet, improving moves, and eventually something I think is expected to drop in a position like this. Also, f3 is now a significant threat. Yeah, rook a8 is clever. I guess we go rook b1. Eventually, I think yeah, maybe rook f1 was slightly stronger because knight e4 now followed by d takes e4. Uh, I wanted to play rook b5 in that position, and now that move is impossible, so I've 
probably made my task slightly more difficult. But I mean, we're still very, very much in control here, as long as we don't go crazy. I'm wondering if I need to play d5 and then rook d1 and then start pushing. It feels okay. It feels like um, it's progress. It also gives me the, the d4 square for the rook. Uh, which is useful to kind of support my eventual uh, advances wherever I choose them to to be. Yeah, I, I blundered that, but I still have rook d4, so it's not it's not going to be too costly. That's a strange choice. I would have played b5 in his spot there. I I don't quite know why bishop a2 was preferred to. Let's say b5, re-establishing the threat of bishop c4. And maybe he just didn't realize rook a1 existed. It's possible. And yeah, the king, if, if the king gets to uh, gets to h2, it's a very, very safe square for it. So it feels like we already should be winning by fours, but uh, there's really no hurry. We can even take on c3 if he goes queen b6, and if he does this, we should at this point, I think, start generating direct threats, like rook d6, queen d4, everything comes in, and, you know, once my pieces become activated, it's just very difficult to see how that position just doesn't fall apart. This I can take, right? This is a bit of a joke, but uh, like it's a harmless joke. We were protecting the, yeah, exactly for that reason. <laughs> exactly for that reason. Uh, game somehow continues. Let it continue, I don't really mind. <laughs> Mm. So far, so good. Not really. I feel like I'm not playing as... Um, so it was a bishop opening of some sort. So what happens if I do this? Didn't really enjoy what I, what I got out of the opening in game one. So I'll try something else. Yeah, this is g3 here. This is very new to me. I have no idea what this is. My, like, I would like to play bishop d7, c6 here, but I'm worried it loses to something. Although what could it possibly lose to is very unclear to me. Yeah, I, I was not aware this move existed at all. Let's see what happens if I do this. Like, I'm worried about takes-takes. Uh, if he doesn't take, then I'm already sort of instantly a lot happier. Yeah, I've played not this specific position, but I've played this structure quite a bit against uh, Alexander Morozevich. Uh, but he always played bishop d3 instead of g3 early on, so it's... It's really not the same at all. Uh, normally the knight doesn't really go to f5 in these structures, but now that he's played h4, I feel uh, a lot more confident putting it on that square because uh, uh, playing g4 is going to be a lot harder for, for my opponent. I would like to go for some kind of h4, h6, g5 play here, but I don't know if I can manage. Knight bd2, yeah, I, I, I don't know if I like my position. This is a good choice by, by Maxim. Uh, it's a line that, it's a rare line to begin with, and then he found a, a, an interesting uh, new-ish, for me, twist on it. 
uh, which, why didn't I take one f3 and e5? Maybe I'm supposed to prepare it. Yeah, let's go. It's kind of important here not to not to blunder g4. dc3, bc3 is playable. I'm kind of trying to time it properly because I think I eventually will have to do that. I think it's maybe time. Maybe even bc3, b5 here or bishop b7 first. I think maybe finishing the development is more important. Knight b6, d5 is one plan here. Knight b6 in general kind of um, trying to worry his center a little bit. Uh, as long as I castle and don't immediately lose to some kind of g4 tactics, I feel like my position is playable. Although I am not enjoying this uh, greatly. The knight on the 5 is very, very sus, as they say now. Very, very sus. Wondering if I'm supposed to push for some immediate g5 counterplay here, but it doesn't appear to be working. I'm worried about bishop h3 next move if I castle. There's also queen a5, but I'm guessing he will quite happily give me some pawns if I do that. Maybe my b6 d5 is actually not stupid. Just to distract him a little bit. I could also maybe make some kind of an argument for including c4, d4, then planting the knight on d5 and pushing b5 and playing like that. If the knight wasn't on f5, the knight on f5 is kind of misplaced, uh, I'd be a lot happier about my chances here. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, the fact that I haven't castled yet is actually double-edged uh, because in, in many positions, in, like in structures like this, the king will actually be safer, uh, at least for the time being, it will be safer in the center than it will be in the, in the corner. But yeah, this is a worrying position. I probably, yeah, queen, I was about to say queen d7 may have been an, an, an annoying threat for my opponent here. Is knight a4 a move? Probably not. I don't know what I want after bishop d2. I may have, uh, I mean, this may, may have been hasty. Like I'll play b5 pretending I have a threat, but I don't actually have a threat. b5 before might not be the stupidest idea in the world, but I'm also worried about just losing the bishop on h4 after g4, knight h4 takes, takes, and g5. I have to worry about that constantly, but for the time being, I think probably h6 solves that issue, at least to some degree. Like, it's not going to be beautiful for me, but... I think at least the bishop is not instantly lost. I could also kind of grit my teeth and go g4, knight, h6, but I would prefer not to. I would very much prefer not to if I have a choice. g5, h6. Am I doing that poorly there? I don't think so. I think I'm kind of okay. Yeah, gf, queen, g4 is very worrying, but I was kind of pinning my hopes on, on being able to castle here. Maybe I'm, I've misunderstood this. I've gotten up to here in my... Hang on a second, I have this move. This may be clever. It could also be just very, very bad, but it, it, it might be a clever, clever little move. Although bishop h3, as I now realize, is a move I did not consider properly at all. G4, I think I can do this, and then knight f5. And yeah, if the knight lands on f5, my position, uh, I think, becomes very, very playable. Okay, I blundered that. I did blunder that. That is certain. Yeah, that was that was not good. Because I, yeah, I've completely uh, ignored the fact that knight d6 check exists as a move. Um, I might not be, a oh, GF, GF now wins, yeah, okay. Yeah, this kind of went downhill very, very sharply. Nicely played by, by Maxim, though. I don't think I have any 
yeah, queen takes h4 or d or anything. Blundering knight takes b5 was um, unfortunate. Yeah, anything wins here. Rook b1, like c4, I, I assume, followed by bishop d6. I'm sort of not resigning because, you know, people always tell me not to resign, but... Huh. Uh, Clever-ish, I guess. I'm being teased a little bit, but queen of four actually still wins. Or queen, queen g3. Queen g3 is... Uh, like the game still somehow continues, although not not very much, obviously. Not a lot. Parts of the game are continuing, but bishop a seven, bishop c five, whatever. Yeah, queen c five as well, I guess. Yeah. Nicely played by uh, by my opponent. Uh, I think I was doing fine until I uh, I missed that that one tactical detail and the position just instantly collapsed. I should have played knight to five straight away, but there were tactical issues with that, and I wanted to uh, I wanted to interpose something and uh, got interposed on instead. D4, E6. Huh. Clever. I'm assuming C4, F5 is what is being planned here. Oh, no, okay. Hmm. I mean, this is entirely playable, but I'm not going to be heartbroken about this opening. But I do appear to be kind of uh, um, outmaneuvered in the opening phase would be, I think, the way to describe it consistently. It's not that I get unplayable positions, but I get the positions that my opponent clearly knows better than I do. I maybe should just stick to playing 1e4, but the French bugs me. Mm, don't particularly want to be playing the French. E5, I was sort of planning to go E4, but there are other options as well. I could go Knight F3, and uh, actually parrying the threat of Knight G5 might be more awkward than my opponent supposes. Uh, that Knight actually landing on E6 is going to be, I think, quite annoying if that happens, and H6, Knight H4 is more or less an immediate disaster, so... Let's see what uh, Maxim comes up with uh, against this simplistic idea. Maybe nice e5 before h6, but that's ugly. Yeah, like this is just a pawn down position, and it's like not a good one either. This bishop on c8 is going to be uh, quite poor for the rest of the game. Yeah, I mean, inviting me to play queen a4 probably makes some sense, but I don't think it changes the underlying quality of the position too much. The queen should go back, though. Let's not blunder knight takes d5 somewhere. I think it's probably already threatened, actually. Um, I didn't really want to play h4 because I do have I, I I do want to have the option of playing h3 if the knight ever lands on lands on g4. This is why I played queen d2 instead of uh, h4, which uh, looked I think much more natural. 
I think in general my king is supposed to go to the queen side in this position. Queen c2, castle queen side, and then just start playing h3, g4, and opening up the king side and just giving mate, I think, is the the prescribed way of converting this. Uh, the king has no business even being on g1, because black, you know, in order to open anything at all on the queen side, black would need to like play a6, a4, b5, uh, which is not going to be very enjoyable. Uh, I could have taken on g5. I don't know why I didn't take on g5. Take on g5, knight d5, knight d5, bishop g5, and then playing that position was also very much something I could have done. But yeah, I think in particular now this is very attractive. Uh, and then g4 there in the end. And just blow everything open and go from there. That knight on d5 is quite strong. Yeah, bishop b6 I thought was the best try, but I'm going to kind of insist that, uh, you know, we get the most there. Although, honestly, like, it's, it's difficult to make a convincing argument against gf5 here. Difficult, but not impossible. I think I made one in my head somehow. So I'm going to do this instead to land the rook on d5 and uh, pick up pick up more material. Takes, takes, queen f6, rook takes f5, queen a1 check, queen d1. I think queen c3 check, king f1 is a very comfortably winning position for me because eventually my mass of pawns on the king side will be the deciding factor. And I don't even lose very many pawns on the queen side in the process because the, the bishop is hanging. Is he planning to go e3? Uh, this I think actually allows me to give mate as far as I could tell. Uh, or kind of as close to mate as makes no difference. A5 even, rook takes A5 wins, but also queen B5 I think is good enough. Yeah, probably going to play queen B5 because I don't want to, you know, suddenly suck, uh, uh, blunder something stupid after A5, rook A5 and, and lose. That would be uh, very unnecessary. Um, okay. Uh, copy, paste. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know which one I dislike the the mo the most. I think we could also just do this. I guess. Uh, Busanji played this against me, and it's not bad. It's a kind of a quieter, quieter way of, of playing these positions, and uh, mm, also had the other has the other advantage of uh, probably not being as as studied as as the other one is. I think I can castle here, although, I mean, d5 already made, I mean, definitely made some sense to play d5 in one go there. I wonder if, uh, yeah, if uh, my opponent is going to go for some kind of a mating plan again with h3 and g4, which is actually not that stupid in, in these types of positions, but we could try to take the sting out of it by just playing bishop b6 and... Uh, yeah, I think without the bishop on a2, these types of plans don't work nearly as well. They're still not stupid, but um, I I feel like there is a lot less to fear when white does this without the bishop on a2 supporting these plans. 
I would like to push this xd5, but currently it's a pawn sacrifice, so probably a bit unnecessary. Knight c5, knight e6 is normally something that should interest black. I was kind of planning to go knight h5, and as I now realize, it's not really all that possible because of knight takes e5. Uh, knight h4 surprises me. Is he intending to go g6, knight f5, actually? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be very happy about that if that happens, I'm pretty sure. I don't think uh, sacrifices like that actually work. I could also just go queen e6, no, sorry, uh, knight e6 and uh, attack the pawn on g5 that way. I think this is sort of more critical. Um, I will say this for my uh, for my opponent. He is uh, not shy about uh, not shy about giving up material. This is a an interesting idea. I I still maintain it shouldn't work uh, if I don't lose my mind, but it's definitely an entertaining idea. And more serious than I originally suspected, actually. Um, because the knight on c5 is a bit misplaced, so like after the gfef, um, before is actually going to be quite annoying at some point. In the meantime, uh, Boar actually got swept by, by Silver Name, which is... Um, not what I wanted to see. Hmm. Actually, like knight c6 check king, uh, king h8 h4 here is quite annoying, a lot more annoying once again than than I gave it original credit for. I think I figured out what I will do against it, but hmm, this is interesting because I think my opponent here, in trying to be imaginative, has given me a very important additional option which I will immediately avail myself of. As long as g6 doesn't give mate, which is kind of worrying me right now. Oof. I'm really worried about g6 right now. I missed it, and... Yeah, this, this might actually be just the end of the game because of how poor my pieces are equipped, how poorly my pieces are equipped to deal with this. Uh, this is very, very nice by, by Maxim. I did not really appreciate how strong this will be. And uh, as is often the case, like you make the move and you immediately spot the problem with the move, but it's too late. I just don't know how I can even continue here. It's remarkable how strong this is. And I was like a fraction of a second too late to realize this is happening. Very, very nicely played. I did not need to do this to myself. Yeah, I just don't, like, I, I can't figure out a way not to get mated. Remarkable. Very, very nice. Yeah, this is just mate. GH wins. I mean, no, GH actually might not win, but Queen H5 wins. <sighs> this is stupid. I could have started with FG. Queen H6, G7 is, I guess, the simplest one. Could have started with HG and uh, gotten a, a normal position instead. That is, yeah, like EF. EF is weird. Like might might still be winning, but this is not what I expected. I don't know. I don't know why he he did not play the. What is happening here? Why is this happening? Why am I why am I still in the game? Like pretty much. Oh, okay, rook g seven, bishop h six is mate. I assume, but is it? With a rook on a2? This is very, very confusing to me. Why am I why am I still alive in this game? 
I, I don't understand. The game should have been over. I mean, it might still end the way it was supposed to end two moves ago, but very confusing to me that we still have a game going on here. B4 is probably very strong, actually. Yeah, I might have to do something like this here. Just to, you know, win a tempo to, to bring pieces closer to the defense of my king. Uh, yeah, but then, like, I, I never actually, rook a1, king d2, and so on, probably just wins, right? Because I can never actually leave the, leave the box there. Rook d3 now, yeah, I've, uh, I've deserved this, like, I haven't played the last few moves well, but... I, I definitely deserve this. It's a miracle that the game continued for as long as it has. Uh, what? Okay, let's try to scare him. Uh, okay. Okay. Is there a mate here? I'm, I'm assuming bishop g7 just wins because the queen doesn't actually give a perpetual. King b2, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, like, uh, the, the game should have been over by move 20 and the fact that uh, uh, it became a bit more of a game is irrelevant. Uh, should should pay more attention to things because, as as mentioned... Uh, I, I, I did spot G6, uh, just a, a second too slow. Okay, what shall we play? So far I have not really enjoyed any of my options and I haven't tried this one yet, so let's go with this. It's going to be a bit annoying because I don't remember anything. Like I played this position so much against Alexander Marazevich in the old days, but like there's no way I can actually remember what what I thought about it at the time. Uh, it's a tricky position to play. But not horrible for white, so you know this is this is a kind of a setup where I feel like I should have a chance of just sort of playing on feel. Uh, am I supposed to take with the queen, or I mean the queen is not bad, but I don't know. Both definitely make sense. Queen d7. This is clever. B6, bishop a6 is coming. This is very clever. I did not expect that move. I'm inviting a3, a4 to, uh, you know, have additional options of uh, knight c2, b4, perhaps. Uh, just to reroute my pieces to slightly different squares. I'm kind of bluffing that I want to play before next move. Maybe not even bluffing necessarily. It's not that stupid. Yeah, but this is kind of reminding me of why I uh, did not enjoy playing that line in those days. It's a very tricky line, and people who, who are playing it seriously with the black pieces normally have a much better grasp of what goes where. 
and you end up kind of chasing the game a little bit. Queen c7 is annoying me quite a bit here. So I think it's a smart move, just stopping me from playing knight of 3d4, which is my dream next move here. This I'm less worried about. Like, it's it's a sound positional sacrifice. There's nothing wrong with it. But, you know, I'm not going to be unhappy about being a pawn up. And, you know, even having some not entirely illusionary play against the black king on the king side here, a 4 or 5 next even, maybe. Probably not after rook g8, though. After rook g8, I feel like I should switch to what I was originally intending, which is knight e2, f4, uh, hinting at knight h5 things. Uh, I did not expect that, but I'm not that bothered, I think. ba, knight h5, g6, ba. My, is my intention here with uh, the knight landing on f6 uh, later potentially. A before rook b8 I just didn't really want to, to discuss. If the rook actually goes to g8 I will now very seriously consider taking the pawn on b4 because why not? We've achieved enough and I think like the pawn on b4 is more important to me than the pawn on d3. Uh, although I did blunder queen g6, I will say that. If I have to play this endgame, I'm a lot less happy about things. And it seems like I might have to play this endgame. Don't have anything stronger. That was a big miss. Like, this is a fine endgame. I'm still probably slightly better because it's not going to be that easy for black to win the pawn on b4 back. But it's a miss nonetheless. Yeah, I'm not going to be, you know, going out of my way not to play the endgame, though. I think h3 is a very nice kind of all-purpose move. Uh, solves my back rank issues, supports the queen, so that the rook on d4 is uh, uh, not really... It doesn't really have to go anywhere. What is this? Rook c3, a3, but yeah, I don't believe in that. I don't really believe in that. I'm wondering if I'm supposed to play rook d7 here or rook fd1. I think rook fd1 is probably safer. And after bishop f8, we can uh, discuss. I would like actually this pawn. Hang on a second here. Threatening a3. This is what I should not blunder here, right? The a3 threat. I realized what the idea is just in time as, as usual. Well, not the usually I actually do it. One second too late. This is a weird move to be making, but it feels like I have to. Because allowing a3 is just not great. Uh, rook c2, we now have uh, knight d3 as an additional option. Bishop c6, we could also go knight d3, knight c5. Or knight e2, knight c3 even. Let's go with this. If we can establish this knight on c5, it's going to do us a world of good. He, he should play h6 uh, at some point. If he decides not to, I will include... Will I? It's actually creating a weakness for myself, I don't know. Maybe rook a1 for now. Stopping those pesky a3 ideas. And the bishop does belong on c3, of course. So I would like to re-establish it on that square. This is a tricky one, a very tricky endgame. What is this? Why am I being given this pawn seemingly for free? I don't quite understand. Takes, takes, bishop c6, rook a3, bishop b4, and then rook d1, I guess, is the point. This is a cop-out. This position is now 
pretty much impossible to win. I'm annoyed at myself. What have I done? What have I just done? Why would you... What have I done? <sighs> like I've just... I've just lost this position in one move. For no reason. G5 just wins. I'm actively trying to sabotage my own... My own game. Like losing this endgame is going to hurt. Quite badly. Very, very badly. Bishop takes f3 in the previous move was also quite strong, but yeah, okay. Yeah, that was that was very, very unnecessary. Much more than the previous one. I should not have played knight c5 in that position. I knew it was a bad move. Okay. Uh, so this is game eight. In which the winner actually wins the entire thing. I really, really don't think this should, this is supposed to be great. But maybe I'm just biased. I don't know. I think I was doing okay up to a point, actually. I don't think I need to adjust very much. <sighs> Maybe not. Maybe maybe this position is actually bad. I don't know. I didn't really like it during the game. I don't know why I'm so happy about going for it. I was actually extremely well, that is a that is a very, very welcome piece of news here. I was much more worried about other things. I don't know about f5, I'm honestly a little bit on tilt from, from previous games, so my decision making here is, I guess, more than, more than a little bit suspicious. But I think my pieces are kind of near enough to the action not to be, like I was much more worried about knight h6. Uh, I'm also obviously extremely unhappy about going from three and a half to uh, one and a half to uh, equal equal scores with uh, with one to go by king's indian standards this should be completely fine but i mean once again it's hugely important that the rook is on a2 it's going to take an additional move obviously for uh for white to bring it into the game so we go king g7, we go rook h8 next, we just trade. And the second one never really arrives. And uh, and then, like, I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to be uh, afraid of. Famous last words. And games are good for me as well. So, like, if, if queen h4 check, I could quite seriously consider just playing queen h7, although I think king g8 is better. Because I think I will, most likely, I will be the side attacking, not my opponent. 
d5 knight e6 yeah i think i think i'm going to keep the keep the pieces on the board i like this position i don't think i need to try to simplify it <sighs> there's just I don't think there's going to be an attack on the king's side for for my opponent at all here. I think it's safe. Uh, yeah, let's go d5, stop knight e4 forever. And very importantly, like there's not going to be any long castling here. Very, very relevantly. Uh, long castles is not a move my opponent can make legally. 92 is already almost maybe the only move he can even make. And knight takes g5, I suspect, does win the pawn if I want it. I don't know if that's the most I can get. I can probably try to get more. Because it's just very difficult for my opponent to make moves here. Knight f8, h7 takes g No, that's probably a little bit too slow of a plan. So if we take... He goes, let's say, I think we can take and then queen f6 and then knight f3. Really don't want to blunder something, though. It would be quite a painful position to blunder something in. Is knight d4 still quite strong? Probably not. Queen f7 is a move I can make, just kind of uh, keeping the shape. E4, knight e5 is something I could be interested in, at least in the future. Maybe not right now. I'm just, you know, banking on the fact that it's just difficult for white to make moves. Maybe king f1 is... Maybe I'm once again trying to overstate my advantage. Bishop e3 is strange because I'm, I was quite happy about the idea of playing d4 anyway. Was I? Maybe I shouldn't have been. Rook f3, knight g1, knight f4, no. Maybe e4 now, actually? e4, d, knight e5. Looks interesting. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of uh, losing the thread here. Knight f4, he takes, takes, takes on d4, which is... Annoying. Knight b6, d5, maybe because it's still quite kind of difficult for him to uh, get his pieces onto good squares. Knight g3, rook f2 still works for me. <sighs> Queen h2. I think I can still do that. I don't think I need to overreact. Knight g3, even knight takes g5 is a move we could try to play. No, there's knight h6 check there in the end. That doesn't work. King e2. What have I... Like, I'm I'm once again trying to turn a very good position into God knows what. Although I'm, I'm very happy about knight e4, though, because it gives me additional squares which were in there a moment ago. I think we're good though, because knight comes into f4 and then we collect everything. Okay, tried very hard to throw this, but did not quite succeed. Happy. <laughs> well played to my opponent, who at no, at no point he, he despaired, and uh, winning two basically on demand after trailing three and a half, one and a half is 
very very good fighting spirit and oh, also very nice. nicely played i think i think i'm done buck poolin just resubscribed and, for four uh, months thanks for the resub let me get the let me get the chat back up yeah that was very very close a lot closer than it had any right to be honestly as far as as far as i'm concerned i've i've given away a lot of ev in that match but uh, happy to have pulled through. Uh, so we have uh, we have done the needful, uh, and now I will play in the in the final sixteen. The final sixteen is extremely stacked, so I think a lot will depend on who I will get in the first round. But uh, yeah, for now, just very happy and very.